today we're going to talk about things we need to maintain in the woods during the fall. Just good fall maintenance that works when the weather's perfect and you can get a lot done. Fall's a good time to get in the woods for sure. Um, there's no snow on the ground which makes traveling a lot quicker, you get more done. And say you have a branch on a line, once you get snow on there it's going to harden, harden up and ice over on the top of the crust of the snow and it's going to be harder to get that line up. Where now you can fly through the woods and get it done real quick. Not saying there might not be another branch that'll fall down, but you get the the bulk of it done, it'll save you a lot of time in the end. And then that'll make sure you're not wasting time when you're trying to tap trees and the sap's about to run and there's a lot more chaos. Got these trees in the sugar bush called the beech tree. Well, it's kind of a, a weed type tree and they like to have a lot of branches and really crown out at a low point. So it, we just clip a little bit of the branches around so you can walk through a little better. Another thing that's helpful when I'm doing this, say the second tree on the line has died out. I can go in, snip out the T, put a connector in there, and uh, we don't have to tap that tree again. Which happens, I mean, it's a natural process. You're gonna have trees that die out. But hopefully you have a tree right next to it that's ready to start going. And that's why thinning and making so you have many generations of trees in your bush helps. <clears throat> so you have a next generation of sugar maple. You see these old tap holes. You know, peppered through. Some of these might not have been good tap holes, um, but what it's showing you is it's a healthy tree. It's grown over. We make sure as soon as we're done sugaring, we're out pulling our taps, so it allows the tree enough time to grow over and uh, button up. So that's all the buttoning up is, and that's what the bacteria is saying. Hey, we got to cut in this tree. We need to scab it over. So we need to use check valves and replace our drops so there's less bacteria to that so we can have a longer season. So, uh, so what we're doing is we're using a pruno splice tool. Uh, we're cutting it, splicing it at the T, replacing the tube, putting on a new tube and spout. Um, and we're using a different colored tubing. Right now we're using yellow. That'll give us identifier saying, hey, we used all yellow in 20, the fall of 2020 to early 2021. So when it comes around to where we need to replace that section again, we know that was the year we did it. Get in, you got a better idea of what needs to replace. So the reason we use a colored spout, um, when we go and pull our spouts, we are, we are going to clip off the old spout and get rid of it. Well, sometimes you might forget to clip that spout. If I have red on this, I need to have it green. I need to clip that off. It's, it's another uh, a teller of saying, hey, we need to have a, a new spout. I forgot or somebody forgot. We'll get it changed. We'll be all good. Right now I'm gonna use a, a splice tool, a stripper tool, and what it does is it has grooves on the cutting blade to allow for the barbs of the fitting. So when I cut it, it doesn't nick the barbs and cuts everything besides the barbs, and I can cleanly strip this tubing off of the barbs and it'll be good as new. So what I do is I get right here I can see the two black lines, which is the two barbs on the T fitting. I line it up, go down, and there. And I didn't hit any of the barbs. Thanks. 
so once I cut it I get a new drop and I like to get it over the first barb before I take my tool my one-handed tool and I put it on get it go and there she's ready to go for next season where your last drop is a red tea, dead tea, and the last part of the loop is all non-vacuum because it's all plugged off, you have those hooks. So say I had a branch down right here, I don't need to splice that or cut it up. I just need to unhook it, bring it back through, and there we go. Which works pretty good. Too much. It does a little bit. Nah. So Leader has two different style dead end tees. The way we run our tubing, we like to use the reds. They also have the greens. And all that's saying is on the reds, when I'm running that tubing, I'm walking and looping around the right side of the tree. And then the left end of the tree is gonna be dead off or it's going to be out of the vacuum system so from here to the end hook there's no vacuum on it all it is is holding the tubing up and it's proven that a lot of your chews are at the end of your main line near the end of your lateral line and at the very last tree so if you can take out a fair section of that line and it's not on vacuum and they were to chew it up the amount of times i've seen the spout's still in the tree, and this chewed up, so it's hanging, and we don't have a vacuum line. It, it's, it, it pays off. We find that doing a job like this, the double pouch belts work really good, because I can put a few rolls of drops in one, and then I can put my old drops in the other, and there's plenty of space to put them in. When I take it off, I like to kind of loop it like that, Put it right in, and I figure I can put probably 60 or so in one pouch, and it lets me go for a little while. Um, roughly, if I can't, right around there is when I'd put a tap in it, depending on how the top looks and whatnot. So with a two tap, how I would determine if it's a two tap, if I could hug it and I can't touch my other wrist with my, my wrist together, I'd put two taps in it. This one doesn't have two taps in it because the top isn't that, doesn't look that healthy or the healthiest, so we just put one in it, but yeah. Mm. 